Hi, you guys. Hi, Henry. Hi, Cora. Hi, Bonnie. Um, this book is called The Man Who Lost His Head. What? By Claire Hutchett Bishop and pictures by Robert McCloskey. Hmm. Aunt Karen recommended this book to read, and I ordered it from Amazon so I'd have a new book to read to you and a new one to have here at the house for whenever you come to visit, which will be sometime before too long. We'll be together again. We just don't know when, but we will. Don't worry. Once upon a time, there was a man who lost his head. He looked under his pillow, but it was not there. He got up quickly and looked under the bed. It might have rolled away, but it was not there. He looked behind the door and in the cupboard and in the cat's basket, but it was not there. He even looked in a garbage can, but it was not anywhere. He sat down and tried to remember. It is very hard to do once you've lost your head. Now, his hands remembered something soft and silky. That was his pig. And his feet remembered a long, tiring walk. And that was the way to the fair. So the man came to know that much, that he had taken his pig to the fair. Therefore, the thing to do was to go back to the fair and look, and look for his head there. Yes, that was the thing to do. Only, of course, he could not go out looking like a headless fellow. So, he went out to the vegetable garden and he picked a pumpkin. And he cut holes in it and made a face. And then he put it on his head and his hat on top. The hat was very small for such a large pumpkin head, but it was hardly the time to be particular. So he went out. Ah, said the village people, how well you look. You must have had a splendid time at the fair yesterday. You are flourishing. We have not sold our pig yet. You are ahead. I'm ahead, the man dis said, distressed. Ahead, ahead. Did you say ahead? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Do you not understand? Asked the village people. And they shrugged their shoulders and turned their backs and said to one another, the poor man, he must have lost his head. Ah, said the man to himself, this pumpkin head is too conspicuous. And he went back home in a hurry. He rushed to his garden and dug out a parsnip. He cut holes in it and made a face, and then he put it on and his hat on top of it. The hat was very big for such a small parsnip head, but it was hardly the time to be particular, so he went out. Ah, the village people said, <laughs> how pale you look, all worn out. You must have had a dreadful time at the fair yesterday. Still, you sold your pig. That should be that much less of a headache. A headache, said the man distressed. A headache, a headache. Did you say headache? What is the matter with you? Do you not understand, asked the village people. And they shrugged their shoulders and turned their backs and said to no one in, and said to one another, the poor man, he must have lost his head. Ah, said the man to himself, the parsnip head is too particular. Let me say that. Ah, said the man to himself, the parsnip 
parsnip head is too conspicuous. Then he went back home in a hurry. Oh. He rushed to his woodshed and he took up a log. He carved a wooden head and made a face and he sandpapered it and polished it. And then he put it on and his hat on top. The hat fitted perfectly. So he went out. <laughs> How do you do, said the village people. And that's all they said to him. So like his own head was the wooden head. So the man went to the fair. When he arrived there, he wondered, now let me see, where shall I look for my head? Surely the pig market was the place. It was on the other side of the fair, and the man had to go through the whole fairgrounds before getting to it. What a hustle and a bustle. What a clatter and hubbub the place was. Everyone shouting his wares and calling from the booths, crockery lotteries, shooting galleries, bowling alleys, and the circus people parading in tights on the platforms and the clowns turning somersaults, the wild beasts roaring, and the merry-go-rounds grinding out their endless melodies. The man had not paid much attention to all this the day before, so intent on was he on selling his pig. But now he was quite taken with the gaiety of the place. He went from one booth to another, bowling, shooting clay pipes, and he threw rings around crockery pieces and was lucky enough to catch an elaborate shaving mug, which he took home with him. He had a ride on a goat and a very fast merry-go-round. He admired the juggler and the tightrope walker and finally decided to go and visit the wild animals. There he is throwing the rings. There he is on the merry-go-round. There were lions, jaguars, leopards, and wolves, and at the end of the row, a beautiful royal tiger. He was stretched out, his left paw carelessly dangling outside the cage. He looked at the people across the bars with a disdainful and bored expression. Here he is looking at the other large cats, and here he is looking at the tiger. Hey there, called jovially the man who had lost his head. How are you, old whiskers? And he leaned over and lightly touched the tiger's paw. Instantly, that paw was in the air, making for the man who fell backward just in time. The people around gasped. The guard rushed in, furious. What are you thinking of, he shrieked. You silly fool, idiot, blockhead. The man was crestfallen. What were you trying to do, went the guard in a rage. Have you lost your head? <laughs> yes, said the man, I have. But no one paid any attention to what he said because when anyone tells you I have lost my head, you really don't, do not believe it. Only everyone withdrew a little and let the man pass and go out all by himself. He felt very dejected, and he sat on a bench trying to recover. He might have been killed by that tiger. It is dreadful what can happen to anyone who loses their head. Here's a closer look.
Please, sir, said a boyish voice. I heard what you told the guard of the menagerie. Is it true that you lost your head? A boy was standing in front of the man, and the boy's hair was tousled and his pants hung from strings. His bare feet showed through the holes in his shoes, but he looked like a kind-hearted and bright boy. Yes, answered the man, it is true. I wish someone could help me find it. It's so very inconvenient, but no one believes me. I do, said the boy earnestly, and I think I can help you. Really, said the man, overjoyed. You're the first understanding person I've met, but what makes you think you can help me? Oh, said the boy, I can because I'm headstrong. Everyone tells me so. Now, sir, of course, said he, climbing on the bench next to the man. The first thing we have to, first thing is to have a detailed description of the lost object. This is always the way to start. What kind of head did you have, sir? A good one, said the man. No use, said the boy. Everybody says the same thing. First of all, how big, like a pumpkin? No, no, said the man hastily, ordinary size. And what shape, asked the boy critically, longish, like a parsnip? No, no, said the man hastily, rather round. Ordinary, round, pounded the boy on his fingers. Ordinary, round, color, rather pink. Yes, pinkish. Ordinary, round, pinkish. Nose, hmm, a little bulbous. Ordinary, round, pinkish, bulbous nose. Eyes, blue. What kind, asked the boy in a businesslike way. Ultramarine, indigo, periwinkle, sky blue. And were they hard or soft, shimmering like a friendly pool or like cold steel? I think they were soft and shimmering like a friendly pool. At least that's what I wanted them to be. Ordinary, round, pinkish, bulbous nose, soft, shimmering sky blue eyes, counted the boy. We are getting somewhere. And the eyebrows were bushy and sandy colored. And wait a minute, said the boy, ordinary, round, pinkish, bulbous nose, soft and shimmering blue eyes, sandy, bushy eyebrows, and curly hair, much of it, ordinary, round, pinkish, bulbous nose, soft and shining sky blue eyes, sandy, bushy eyebrows, opulent, curly hair, you go in for big words, remarked the man. I like them, said the boy. What about the ears? A trifle too large, admitted the man. Frequent, said the boy. Let me see. Ordinary, round, pinkish, bulbous nose, soft and shimmering sky blue eyes, sandy bushy eyebrows, opulent curly hair, average ears, average ears. And what about the mouth? Look at all these different ears. Big enough, exclaimed the man gaily. And what about the teeth, asked the boy almost severely. They cannot be neglected. All of them and, and even and healthy, said the man proudly. Just what I thought, said the boy. <sighs> Just what I thought. And of course, no beard, no mustache, no whiskers. You shave? How do you know, inquired the man. Easy, said the boy. I can see that you chose a shaving mug for your prize. Now, let's recapitulate. Ordinary, round, pinkish, bulbous nose, soft and shimmering sky blue eyes, opulent curly hair, sandy bushy eyebrows, average ears, big enough mouth, even and healthy teeth. Ah, sir, said the boy, such a fine head and you lost it. How do you think your head feels about it? Badly, said the man. That's just it, said the boy, so there's no use looking for it. A head like that cannot be found.
What? shrieked the man. No, said the boy. We have to do something drastic. We have to conjure it back. I know all about it. I saw a magician once. There was a rabbit hidden in the audience, and the magician conjured it back into his hat. Only one has to say the right word and make the right gesture, and then it all happens. All right, said the man. I'm willing. Sir, said the boy, getting up and looking earnestly at the man, I think I know what kind of word and what kind of gesture I should use in this case. Only you must understand it is all for your own good, and I would never do it if you had not lost your head. As a matter of fact, it is going to be pretty hard on me, too, he added reflectively. Whereupon, he pulled pieces of rags out of his pocket and began rolling them around his right hand. He held them tight, making a big mitt for his right hand. And then he said, ready, sir? Why, yes, said the man. What on earth are you going to do? Bully, 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 bang! And the boy punched the wooden head as hard as he could. The man saw a thousand stars. He felt dizzy and a sharp pain shot through his body and he opened his eyes. He was in his own bed. And he had his even and healthy teeth, his big enough mouth, his average ears, opulent curly hair, sandy bushy eyebrows, soft and shimmering sky blue eyes, bulbous nose, his own pinkish round ordinary head. That's the end. Was it a dream or did the boy fix it? He ended up in his own bed. That makes me think it might have been a dream. Well, hope you liked it. Mm -hmm.